How about a brisk, painless Julia Child recipe? Or is that even possible? Welcome back to Jamie and Julia. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. So we're in volume two of Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking, and there's a recipe in here I really, really want to make today. The thing is, it looks kind of straightforward and a little bit, dare I say, easy. And you know, for a Julia Child recipe, that is great news. <laughs> the, they don't come around too often. I tend to avoid the easier ones and kind of go for the hard ones. Anyway, I've had a string of challenges recently. I figure what the hell, kind of treat yourself today. So we're gonna make it. It's called crepe a la piperade. Cooked bell peppers, onions, tomatoes, cheese, and herbs, plus a light batter to bind them all together are the basic ingredients for this attractive vegetable combination, which is cooked like pancakes. Instantly, my mind just hears cheesy pancakes. And I'm like, all right, I'm all over this. It's a no brainer. Let's make it. Now, first things right off the bat, we gotta start with our crepe. I'm trying not to say crepe, it's American pronunciation. I wanna stay far away from that today. So I'm working on my crepe. Crepe. I'm just gonna go with crepe. Bowl me. We need to make crepe bat. After all that, I need preferably instant blending flour. I'm not familiar with it and I don't have it. I just have all purpose flour. There's a way of making a substitute for instant blending flour. It's two cups of flour and I add a teaspoon of cornstarch. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go with all purpose. She says it's cool. One third cup, 45 grams of all purpose flour. In goes one large egg and the eggshell, but that is optional. Quarter teaspoon of salt, teaspoon and a half of cooking oil. I'm using avocado. So then one third cup, 75 mils of milk. I'm gonna whisk it till it's smooth. Any other time that I have made crepe batter, I used a blender. And yeah, it was quick and painless, but it was also pointless because this mixing together like this with a whisk takes like five seconds. You just gotta do this until it's smooth. So I'm gonna make that as smooth as possible, but at the end of the day, I'm just gonna be passing that through a sieve. Thank you. We're gonna need, you know, bowl me please too. <laughs> Thank you. So through the sieve. Get the wrap on there. I'm gonna let this batter rest for at least an hour, uh, but this book doesn't have any explanation as to why. And I'm familiar as to the reason why, but let me, let me, uh. but if we go to volume one, we get our reason and we're gonna let the batter rest for at least an hour so that the flour particles expand in the liquid and it ensures a tender, light, thin crepe. Thank you very much. As I've done this before, I'm gonna let this hang out in the fridge. So the person upstairs is doing their thing as per usual, vacuuming away. It is a Sunday after all, I don't blame them. Plus they can probably hear me talking right now and it's probably incredibly annoying. Anyway, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is mise en place all my vegetables, get this all prepared. And by the time that that's done and their floor is clean, we'll meet back up here, continue on our way. What do you say? One green bell pepper sliced. I'm gonna slice up some onion. Parsley, minced. Three to four tomatoes, or this is five. Into boiling water for 10 seconds. Back, they come over here. Cut the stem out. Easy peeling. Cut them crosswise. Gently squeeze out the seeds and the juice. And gotta slice the remaining tomato pulp. Two to three to four large garlic cloves. Let's load this sucker up. All four of them. It never does a perfect job, so get the rest out of there. And then go to town. All right, vacuuming has ceased. Vegetables are prepped, except for the basil. I need to mince this up, but I'll do it closer to when I need it because I don't want it to turn that brown blackish look to it when it oxidizes. No good, hate that. So let's move on to the, ooh. we gotta move on to the cheese. Some Swiss cheese today, specifically Gruyere. So I had the grater on standby. I totally thought I was about to use this, but no, it turns out that I just need to dice this up. 
And it needs to be what? It needs to be a 3 8 inch dice. Yeah, okay. Okay, loving it. Loving it. So you are invited over to the stove. Welcome. Medium heat, and I'm gonna. That was olive oil, and it's gonna spill all the way behind the oven there. Cooking shows can sometimes be bogus. Case in point. I'll have to clean that later. That sucks. Three tablespoons of olive oil ought to do it. That's one, two, three. Medium heat. This is the one and a half cups of sliced onions. You know what? Some of the parsley is gonna have to go along for the ride. Just picture it as if it's all onion, no parsley in there at all. All right, pizza spatula. For around 10 minutes, let's cook up these onions until they're tender and translucent. We keep it stirring, keep it stirring. Throw in the one and a half cups of green pepper. Maybe not put it all on the same plate next time. Cook it like this for three to four minutes. So my three to four ripe tomatoes, I used five, but they were smaller. We mashed up cloves of garlic. All right, I gotta cover that for several minutes until the tomatoes have rendered their juice. Uncover. These tomatoes didn't really render that much juice. I have a feeling Julia's are far more juicy. Anyway, needless to say, she wants me to turn the heat up and boil this for several minutes. And then she wants to toss the pan, toss the pan until all the ingredients have blended together. And the liquid has completely evaporated. I think I'm gonna take back what I said about the tomatoes. I can see the juice, it's boiling, and it's starting to evaporate. This is fantastic. With a capital F. Salt. Pepper. Two tablespoons of minced up parsley. I just turn the heat off, turn the heat off. and a tablespoon of minced basil. Bowl me, please. Thank you. Before we do anything else, I forgot a half a teaspoon of dried oregano. How's this tasting? A little more salt. Hope everyone's okay. A little pepper. This right here is the piperad mixture. Did I say that correctly? Piperade. Pretty close. Five ounces is 141.75 grams. Of cheese, blended. Along with half a cup, which is a significant amount of this crepe batter mix. Right? Half a cup of the batter. It's, there's not much left after this. Blend this in as well. We're back at the stove, it's time for the main event. 10 inch non-stick frying pan. I brush the pan with a little bit of oil. Not too much, but not too little. On a moderately high heat until the oil is hot, but not quite smoking. This is an entirely new way of making these things. So uh, I've never done it with filling before, so I'm not 100% how it's gonna how are you gonna like spread it on the pan? I guess I just act fast, like really effing fast. Just gonna take a ladle and go to town, I guess. I'm just reading that I need a baking sheet. It's cramped working space right now. I need a baking sheet that's been greased up. So let's just do that off to the side. Go, 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 go. The cookbook's not really offering much in what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. It just says spread it on the pan. So this is what I'm doing, spreading it on the pan as if I'm making a pancake. Time it, two minutes for the first side. 
until little holes start to appear through the surface. I have no idea how I'm supposed to flip this thing. Turn and cook on the other side, she says. How? How are you supposed to flip this thing? How the f am I supposed to flip this? Upside down? All right, we're gonna have to do something dramatic here. It's a make or break moment for this video. God damn it. Not bad, but not great. We can piece it together though. One minute on the second side. Onto the baking sheet. The short burst of intensity that comes when you're making like really thin crepes, uh, that's not here. This is just like a you're making a pancake, so you can just kind of take it easy. Two minutes on the first side. The other thing is this thing is really forget, like I can do whatever I want with this thing and it's gonna come back together again. Everything is in its right place now. Kitchen is cleaned, so I'm reheating my pancakes. I'm calling them pancakes now. For five minutes in a 425 degree F oven, just before serving. Are you ready? In a second. That's for me. Oh, get that plate out of there. Okay, fantabulous. It's go time. Right. I still don't know how to get these off this thing. What is facing upward right now is what I want it to look like on the plate. So I have to kind of shimmy it over. I'd rather do the flipperoo, but I don't know what the other side on the bottom looks like, you know? All right, we got one more here. Heave ho. All right, well that's that. Order up. I'm wondering if we can get one of those epic cheese pulls. Can I just grab it? It's not gonna happen, is it? This may be one of the most addictive things that we've made on Jamie and Julia so far. And I'm not sure if I made enough for like four people or something. I surely had enough for three. Practice restraint. That was fantastic. You know, it's like pizza without the carbs. This is not meant to be just a plate of pancakes. You're gonna serve it with like a protein, like a chicken or a roast or pork chops, et cetera, et cetera. It'd be interesting to make that with different types of cheese. But might I say that the cheese selection today with the Gruyere, good choice. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. Problem is, I can't like reach into the back of my throat there and grab that and add it to a word, especially like midway through a word. So, you know, crap, 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 crap. I've gone to French class, I've tried to I've tried to practice, I can't do it. Anyway, I gotta make the crepe 